Okay, good afternoon everybody, thanks for coming. Yeah. We will talk about uh, a social network analysis uh, work that, that we just did, so I will present about it. Okay. Um, so, this is again, this is not classical textbook stuff, but just how I see things. So, this is just a personal perspective. Yeah. So, the way I like to distinguish between data mining and social network analysis is the following that um, suppose let us look at people who are calling each other on telephone. right? So, I think of data mining as being you know who calls how often. right? So, if I know that you call your parents or grandparents every Saturday or Sunday, I know more and more about each one of you that I call classical data mining. right? So, uh, so if you think of that you know you are having the microscopic view of every person that you that you want. Okay. So, that is that is what I call uh, data mining right for, for the current talks context. Right. And if I look I, I, I call the social network analysis view as a telescopic view where you know I just zoom out and I see every human being just as being a dot right. And if two people are calling each other I connect the dots with a line right. So, so instead of looking at what each person is doing as an individual or right as a collection what I am rather interested in is that where are you located in this network and depending on whether you are at the center or at the fringes does it affect how you behave right. So, so in, in today's talk we are really interested in what I like to call the telescopic view ok. So, what we what we got is we got a lot of data you know that these are you know these numbers are actually your phone numbers that have been masked because we do not really need to see the numbers. But let us say that you know so, so I know that caller number 1 called caller number 2 and spoke for 62 seconds right. And so, I, I get rows and rows of, of this data right and I can convert it th that data into this kind of picture. This picture here where each person is really a dot and if this guy calls this guy there is a line that connects these two dots right. And of course, sometimes I may call you and you may call me so that you see a bi directional arrow. What I can also do is that the amount of time you talk with each other, I can put that as a weight on this link or this edge. Yeah. So, of course, I have you know millions and billions of such uh, such calls, and so I can I can kind of build some sort of a network, right, a social network, where each person is one dot. Now you can imagine that if you and your friend call each other like one thousand times in a week, right, then still become compressed because there'll be only two dots and one line. Right. So, all these millions of rows will actually get uh, compressed when I store it in this graph form, right. But all the essential information is still present in this uh, in this graph, right. Now, of course, I cannot really visualize this uh, because I have millions of edges just look like some mess, right. So, what we have to do is we really have to analyze this graph, right. We have to look at certain parts of it to see which parts are giving us insights that are of interest to us that is the game ok. So, so many many years back um, uh, you know uh, uh, AT and T Bell Labs because they, they of course, had a telephone company and they also had the research to do this kind of thing right. So, they, they, they did this you know uh, this was I think the first study that I know of where, where they looked at all landline in those days they were only landline phones right. So, they studied these landline phones all the calls made in one day they got a huge uh, you know 53 million vertices and, and that is that was really one of the first studies of, of this kind ok. And then of course, you know close to 2000 uh, this whole world wide web thing they analyze this as a graph. If one web page points to another page each web page gets a becomes a dot and if, if I'm, I have a hyperlink to you to the other page then I have a line right. And so, then people analyze this graph and they came up with what is called a bow tie model and they, they, they found very many interesting characteristics uh, of, of this and this became really really famous right, the bow tie model. Because before this was really probably one of the first uh, major studies of this type before this people thought that these networks are formed randomly and this paper clearly showed that these networks are not formed randomly and you know all this kind of thing. So, just, just to give you a very brief background of you know historical background of, of, of what was happening. Coming to our context what we were interested in is that we got data from telecom operators right. 
we got data from telecom operators and what we had to do is let's see if we can solve any real business problem using this data okay so so that was that was our goal and 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 we'll see examples of this okay so one of the things that is really important to a telecom operator is am i losing my customer right airtel is worried if my customer is going to go to jio yeah jio is worried that somebody is going to go to you know this is this is what is called churn okay the the technical term for this is churn which means one guy is leaving to another network provider and and this is this is this has been a this has been a major problem from day one right uh, especially in india if you think it's it's a real problem in in some other the the other interesting thing is that across different countries uh, the models are very very different so in some advanced countries customer churn is little less of a concern once they sign on because they also get a mobile phone along with it so they stay they make sure that they'll stay for at least one year and so on so there are very many business models but but for our purposes let's just take the indian market right where now with uh, what is called number uh, portability you can really switch any time right there is nothing that really holds you on to be with us be with an operator right so so as a company i have to worry you know why why are people leaving my network can i can i predict if somebody is going to leave right so these are the problems that are of of real interest and and, and for today's purposes our talk is just to see that if we look at everything as a social with a social network analysis lens can we can we see anything that is you know uh of you does it give us any interesting insights right uh, or not so the churn prediction now you can imagine that these are all people right these are all people okay and and and, and this is the way i imagine let's say that you know this is uh, december right this is the month of december now now let's say that in the month of november the people who are marked i actually left my, let's say i'm let's say i'm airtel network okay in airtel network we are in december right now and these people who are marked i this one and that one these are the people who left my network at the end of november right so now what i'll think is that oh these guys have now left airtel or it's possible that they have friends still in my network or it's possible that their friends will also leave so who are the people that they were talking to before they left that's what i need to know so what i'll do is i will actually go to the month of october when these guys were still there and i will take this graph based on all the calls that were made in october to see who are those people whom they were talking to a lot because if they have not yet left maybe they will leave in january or end of december so what can i do to stop them can i do anything to stop them right so i look at this graph and then what i see is that oh okay i these two eyes this guy is talking to this guy this guy and so on right so what i do is i do a model based on this i say that i will say that you know this guy is sort of releasing energy to all his neighbors right so i think of this as an energy propagation model so this guy gives energy to him uh, this I, i ignore the i ignore the direction of the arrows because it doesn't matter whether you are calling me or i am calling you right it matters that if i talk to you i might influence you to to switch or whatever so when we do this so everybody is giving some energy into their neighbors right their neighbors are then giving energy to their neighbors and so on right so you can imagine an energy propagation model now what i do is that if somebody gathers energy from here and energy from here and collects energy if the accumulation of the energy exceeds a certain threshold then i'll say you know what this guy is likely to churn okay that means he is likely to leave leave the network so if you look at unfortunately since i don't have animation you can't see the colors but you'll get you'll get the idea so this guy gives some energy to this he gives some now look this guy for example is n n i say is because he is neutral what happens is that this guy gets energy and he forwards this energy okay this guy gives energy but this, but this guy also forwards this energy right so the c1 and c2 guys have accumulated so much energy that they become the predicted churners right for the month of january okay there could be people like this who are only transmitting the energy but they are themselves not leaving the network just like a disease okay so you can imagine this as a disease flow network or an uh, you know uh, an infection spreading network or you know some 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 sort of viral or energy flow diagram but on the basis of this you are actually able to predict that if these guys churned at the end of november it's possible that these two guys will churn at the end of december or january depending on what time you're doing this. okay so so we did we did these studies and in in some cases and this 
the results varied a lot based on the geography or the operator right it matters in which geography you did the study it also mattered whether in a particular region whether the telecom operator for whom we are doing the study whether he was a major player or not so we got you know different results sometimes this so basically we got a success rate of anywhere between a factor of 2 compared to the random to a factor of 7 right so sometimes it was very effective sometimes it was less effective but but this was to show that you know that people can even have a social influence on churn or at least it's possible that people churn because their friends churn right now as of course in the uh, maybe you know many many years back this is that um, a whole group of friends will join one network and they'll get a good deal and then they will all switch together and so on right they'll they'll change operators so so this is not uh, far from from the truth i suppose then the other thing we were interested in studying was actually communities right so this is imagine you these are all your high school friends and these are all your college friends right so this is a very typical picture it will be interesting to see if i can find such cliques of people right one easy way for me to make sure that you stay in the network is to say you know what any time you call within a click i will discount your call rates by 20% right and right now there are of course there are programs let's say you know you join your family or you 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 know you give me the names of your family and friends and i'll do it but actually the telecom operator does not even have to ask you they have this data they say look any time you call in a click i'll discount if i do that then you will not leave my network right and if you are part of multiple cliques you know, you can get more discounts right so um, so this was uh, this was another another sort of uh, study we did now here is a very different now here if you look at this let's contrast this so here in this community right not only does uh, amitabh bachchan know shahrukh khan and shahrukh khan know amir khan but amitabh bachchan also knows that shahrukh khan and amir khan know each other right this is how the classical thing goes that not only are you to my friends but i also know that you are each other's friends and so on so that's the classic uh, clique picture yeah where everybody knows that everybody else is a friend now contrast this with this picture where you know there is a hub and there are spokes now the spokes don't know each other so while in the clique case it was all really peers right in the hub and spoke case it may be very very different roles so for example the hub could be a buyer or a spoke is a seller or vice versa right or the hub could be somebody who is very influential right or somebody is very popular so so if you if you this could be like you know some 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 this guy could be a celebrity here right and these people are just uh, kind of following but then the direction here is opposite so maybe this guy is a telemarketer who is calling all the people to buy stuff and nobody is calling him back right and he is of course calling random people so these people are not connected with each other right so the thing is that even when you look at this pattern although you don't know anything about you know the profile of the guy where he lives i don't even know his phone number but by looking at these patterns you can actually guess a lot about what the person is is doing right so i may not know whether he is selling uh, you know whether he is selling uh, phone connections or is he selling cakes i don't know that but at least i know that he is some sort of a telemarketer or something right so these are the kind of patterns you can find out right so if all of these arrows are going incoming instead of outgoing then i could say maybe this is a call center which only accepts incoming calls but no outgoing calls right and there are some things which just do outgoing calls and no incoming calls you, you know about all these businesses right so now even if nobody tells me what they are doing if i see that oh there are 500 or 5000 people doing this then i already know what kind of business this guy is doing and as the marketing department of a telecom operator i'll say like you know give me all the guys who have more on this kind of pattern for 10000 things and let's let's target them with a different kind of uh, plan right so you can see that this can really give you this simple technical insights can really give you a lot of business leverage of using these insights yeah and 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 improving your your business right so similarly of course one was click where, where we insisted that everybody should know everybody else but sometimes that may not be the case right sometimes we just say, you know what a lot of people here seem to know each other look at this 129 people where everybody knows at least 18 others now the whole thing is that think think like a telecom operator right i have millions of subscribers now whom do i know how do i know whom to give a deal that they will like i have to make sense so many times we get messages which are completely irrelevant to us right instead i say okay look out of this million people let me zoom in to different parts find out what that pattern is and offer them something that will probably be of use to them right then you can do a much better job of it right so so here for example if i know that these guys are are maybe these guys are all subscribing from a company right many times it happens as a as a company i'll say you know all my employees will get a package deal from vodafone all of you get vodafone at a better plan blah blah 
so maybe this is something like that right or i don't know if they are all interested suddenly in golf or cricket or i don't know what i don't know what but the thing is at least we can point the marketing department and subset the users that look here is something interesting now go and find out more about them do something with it right so that that was the that that has been the sort of idea around them then here is the thing which uh, uh, which is there i don't know if this is still true but a while back right about 10 years back what would happen is that let's say you have an airtel prepaid card okay you go to a shop and you say that look i want to recharge this thing it means you want to add more money that will say sir you will not get a good plan in this you will only get you know uh, whatever 1 rupee per minute but i have something if you buy a new connection from airtel only you will get 50 paisa per minute so what happens he will swap the swim sim that means i will give up an old airtel connection and and get a new airtel connection so airtel as a company will think oh i lost one customer and i gained a new customer but that's not the, the reality the reality is that somebody just changed yes this is called rotational churn okay or internal churn that means the guy just rotated now how do i find out as a company i would want to know okay, how many people really left was how many people just sort of rotated right so here the way we we thought about this is that look so suppose this guy uh, you know before and after he's still calling the same if it's the same guy he's probably calling the same people at roughly the same frequencies so if i just do that and if i try to match it right then then i'll come to know that at least with a degree of confidence now it is possible look in principle it is possible these are two different people who have the same set of friends and they're calling them at the same frequency so with a degree of confidence i can still say that well it's likely that although this guy changes number it's really the same person so with that i can at least try to distinguish between real churn and rotational churn right so it can give you even this kind of insight okay now let's say that i'm interested as airtel i'm interested in seeing whom from vodafone can i kind of attract to come to airtel okay now consider this scenario so this guy is in let's say vodafone and uh, these four guys are in airtel and this guy is in again say vodafone or idea and these guys are in airtel now i really want to spend only 1 rupee that means i want to send a message to join whether this guy or this guy which guy should i send a message to bottom or top right bottom why because he seems to know some people who know each other which means this could be his friends right so if this guy this guy is more likely just doing some random business call so there is no way for me to attract uh, into my network right so exactly as you said intuitively it makes sense that look i'll say look if you call these four people and they are talking among each other i'll give you a deal and you switch so this also tells you that you know if i'm trying to target people from other operators into my network i can do that a little more smartly then just doing it blindly no 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 so all the red ones are mine but but this is okay this guy so long as he is calling to my network i know all of this so when he calls into my network this these red lines i can see no no i don't know who else he is talking to in his network see that's why i said this is airtel this is airtel so if it's all the four are airtel i know that they are not talking among each other these four are talking among each other this i can that's why i said this part is airtel that is the outsider this part is airtel that is the outsider answer your question yeah okay so so this way i can be a little smarter about uh, about acquiring my my targets potential targets yeah now now this here comes the question right so right now what happens i mean probably today but definitely if you back is if your bill is high then you are a valued customer right but that's a very very narrow way of looking at what value a customer brings to my network now suppose i am amitabh bachchan or somebody i only get incoming calls i don't dial out anybody so my monthly bill may be zero but if you let me leave the network then all that money that was coming to me because of the incoming calls now will suddenly go to the my friendly operator right so so that's not very smart so when you think of customer value what we are trying to educate the operators is that in think of customer value please think of it much more broadly than just being what is the monthly bill that a guy generates right so for example so one thing is just how many incoming calls i get that's one very simple measure but think of even better ones right so for example these people are connecting communities maybe these people are influencers maybe this guy uses vas services and downloads a wallpaper or ringtone then maybe all of these people will do right so there is so much of benefit that may come from an influencing influencing customer 
right that you have to really roll that into the value that this customer of mine is bringing to my network not just how much monthly bill is he paying right so think about that people who are hubs of stars right we saw a few pictures back right so they could probably be very important in influencing people who are making these outgoing calls or incoming calls or right or people who are these click connectors click connectors right i mean what role are they really playing are these people sitting between all these doctors and lawyers are they are they somehow important in the network we need to know all that right so the thing is that when you do this kind of analysis it's possible to zoom into this into the interesting parts of the social network and try to get more insights about how i can use this information about them yeah okay now i'll talk about another topic so this is this is all what we talked up till now was all the stuff that you can do when you know about the social network means who is calling whom and who is talking to whom and who is smsing whom and so on right now now let's take let's take another aspect of the data which is uh, this is by the way vas is called value added services right so in a telecom operator's case uh, this let's say think this could be wallpaper this could be ringtone this could be some games or uh, you know you are taking tv services you know there are so many value added services that telecom operators provide right now what happens is that so so not only do i have this guy is talking to this guy but i also have this guy is buying this but this guy is buying that so i'm getting two pieces of information so now the question is if you have two pieces of information can i do better can i do something smarter or not that's the question right now if you ignore okay so let's so for example i can ask a simple question right what are the communities that are interested in a particular business? can i say that you know here's a community like like a clique or a star community where all of these people are interested in this product i can ask this kind of question right that's because we have a social network lens applied to the data when we look with social network eyes we can ask this question this questions come to our mind because we are having a social network analysis lens right and or which product are not being bought by community it will tell me all these kinds of insights now let's let's take it so so we'll see uh, we'll see this in a little bit uh, right so so this is the this is the people social network right this is what the telecom operators have and this is also the vast network now in, now interestingly you, you you know very well that if i ignore the purple links right this is the kind of data that amazon also has so amazon knows that this guy bought this book so they will always give this uh, is, uh, people who bought this book also bought blah right you get these recommendations what amazon does not have is this they don't know that you are talking to each other in the real life from somewhere else. now telecom operators and these is of course uh, facebook and twitter and all of them have this advantage right they have both these types of information they know who is connected to whom they know what they are talking about also they know that these two people are talking about cricket these two people are talking about politics whatever it is right but uh, this analysis was done in the pre twitter or whatever days right so i'm so i'm still trying to motivate the case that the question is yeah i have two types of data this right and this that means who knows who and who is buying what who is interested in what and by combining these two can i do better okay now this this part if two people are buying the same thing then i call these people similar right amazon business recommendations based on this similarity people who bought this book also bought this book that is whether two people are similar the other question is are two people know each other that's a question of familiarity right i know you but i may be completely different from you my interest and your interest may be in terms of buying may be completely different but we are friends for whatever reason so the question is can you bring familiarity and similarity together to do something better and smarter that was the question so so what do you do okay you say look i have this people social network data i also know who bought what okay so now i have two pieces of information who knows who and who bought what okay this i can uh, i can so if i look at just the people who bought product 1 i'll get one graph just the people who bought product 2 i'll get another graph people who bought only product 3 and people who bought only product 4 right so i i just took one data set and i divided it into four parts now what i can see is right that i want to see how many clicks are coming out of each each case so i see that look here is c1 c2 c3 c1 c2 c3 right that's come twice c6 c7 c8 has come twice c2 c3 c5 so so what i'm saying is that this communities have bought more than one product together right that means not only is this a community but they are also similar in the sense that they have bought more than one product together so these communities 
are also like minded, they are buying similar things, right. So, if I put these two things together, then I can do better viral marketing, right. So, what is the point? So, many times you see studies which say, you know, uh, viral marketing worked really well, right. Or you see, well, it did not work really well. Maybe what is happening is that if you see viral marketing in a community which is not really similar, which is not like minded, it's like if sometimes you do it with something that is like minded, then it is to succeed. So, really that is the kind of analysis that you know, you do not treat all communities the same, find the ones which are like minded and if you try this, then maybe viral marketing will succeed. So, that was our idea. I think I am uh, out of time. So, if you have any questions, you can perhaps, uh, perhaps ask me.